Hello guys this is your friend. And we are back with our new fanfic. Which is. What if Naruto and Hinata stop pretending we can show their true powers. Part 1. The link of this fanfic is in the description. And if you enjoy this fanfic then please press the like button. And please subscribe to the channel it motivates me to upload more fanfics like these for you all. Now let's start the fanfic. Midday Kanahagakur no Sato. Team 7 and various other teams that managed to pass the first part of the Chunin exam were all standing in front of the gates of Training Ground 44. It was huge forest surrounded by a high metallic fence with multiple signs warning people not to enter. It was called the Forest of Death. According to the examiner Mitarashi Anko, this was where the second part of the Chunin exam would be held. It was a very dangerous place, filled with hordes of flora and fauna. After receiving the needed instructions, each team was given a heaven or an earth scroll. Their objective was to take the opposite scroll from the another teams by any means necessary. Then they would have to bring both scrolls to the tower, which was located in the center of the forest, if they wanted to head to the next round. After each team received a scroll they were all given an hour to get ready before they would enter the forest for five days. Team 7 had been given a heaven scroll which was now in possession of Sasuke, he was currently trying to ignore his other teammate Sakura who was desperately trying to get him to agree on going on a date with her. Their blonde team member on the other hand was further away stretching under a tree. Naruto was just finishing his little warming up when he was approached by his former classmate Hanata Yuhi. She was once a member and heir of Konoha's most powerful clan, the Hyuga. A clan famous for their, all-seeing, dujutsu called by Akugan. Unfortunately she was disowned by her father when she was just six years old, because he deemed her a weak, too, soft, and failure who didn't deserve the position as clan heiress. She was actually a very kind-hearted girl that even after her banishment didn't hold a grudge against her father or clan. Even if they view her as a weakling and failure. Kuranai Yuhi, she was the woman who immediately took Hanada in after she was kicked out. Said woman had always been like a mother to Hanada ever since her biological one died giving birth to her sister. Kuranai who was also Hanada's sensei was glad that Hanada wasn't a member of the Hyuga clan anymore. She found the clan's high and mighty attitude and the way they viewed themselves better than anyone that wasn't a Hyuga's just despicable. Hanada clearly didn't fit there because she was the exact opposite, she unlike them treated everyone as an equal and didn't look down on anybody. Kuranai guessed she got her kind heart and caring side from her mother. Hanada stopped in front of the blonde. NN Naruto-kun. She stuttered. Said boy turned to face her. Hey Hanada-chan, how are you? He asked grinning. I I'm f fine and why you? She asked back. Her cheeks turning pink. Great, I'm set and ready for the exam, he exclaimed excitedly pumping his fist in the air. What about you? I I think I am. She faintly stuttered her reply. She reached into her jacket pocket and held out a small container in front of him. I I wanted tea to give you tea this. Naruto took the small container and studied it with squinted eyes. Uh, thank you Hanada-chan. But what is it? I it's healing ointment it will help heal your wound very quickly. She explained with more confidence still blushing. Naruto smiled at her. Thanks Hanada-chan, I think I'm definitely going to need it. Hanada's face turned scarlet. A presence suddenly came up from behind Naruto and took him in a headlock. How is my little Otudo and his girlfriend doing? The female examiner asked grinning and started pinching the blonde's cheek. Anko Nichan let go of me. He growled while struggling to get free. That's Anko sensei to you, we're not at home. Yaki. She said sternly releasing the blonde. I wish you were. He muttered under his breath rubbing his now red cheek. What was that? Anko asked crackling her knuckles as she had one of those scary looks her eyes. Nothing. Forget I said anything. Naruto quickly answered waving his hands in front of him. Hum. I thought so. She mumbled. Hanada just shook her head at both their behavior. 
Do you two always have to fight? She asked crossing her arms. She sighed. They have been living with each other for eight about years now and they still fight. She thought. It's how we show that we love each other. Anko grinned pulling the blonde ear. When Naruto been kicked out of the orphanage at the age of four without a reason. He was found by Anko Mitarashi two days later sleeping in an alley, while she was making her way through the village. Because she knew what burden he carried that led to him being treated badly, she requested the Hokage to adopt him. From personal experience she knew how it felt like to be looked down on and hated for something that wasn't your fault. And after seeing the situation Naruto was living in, she immediately made her decision. He wouldn't be living the same lonely life she had live. Naruto was happy when he learned that Anko wanted to adopt him, someone other than the Hokage actually cared about him. Moving in with Anko was the happiest day in his life because he finally had some he could call, family. And with Anko being Kurinai's best friend he was also introduced to Hinata when Kurinai took her in. So how are my two favorite actors doing? The snake mistress asked. Well if what you're implying is, if people still think I'm a loudmouth Dobi, then yes, my cover is still intact. Naruto answered with a shrug. And what about you Hinata-chan? He asked turning to said Kunoichi. No one suspects a thing, she answered smiling. That's good, Anko said with a satisfied look. So when are you guys going to drop those ridicules masks? She inquired wondering when they would stop fooling everyone by acting shy or loud. Both gazed at each other before Naruto shrugged. Who knows, maybe during this part of the exam. Naruto answered. Hanada nodded. Well, the sooner the better, cause I'm really starting to believe that you both truly are spineless or an idiot. The snake mistress said looking from Hanada to Naruto. She received two heated glares from both Jen and when Hanada started to smile. Care to repeat that Anko-chan? Hanada asked with a sweet voice that made Naruto shiver. Anko raised her hands up in defense, hey I'm just saying. She spoke slightly terrified. Hanada could really be scary sometimes. She glanced at her watch and immediately her face turned serious. It's almost time to start the second part of the exam, so you two should head back to your own team. She told them. Both nodded and turned to her. See you later Hanada-chan and good luck. Naruto grinned before they parted ways. Same to you Naruto-kun. She replied with a smile. Hanada made it back to her own team and went to stand next to her insect-using teammate, Shino Abarame. Oi Hanada, where have you been? Her other teammate Kiba Inazaka asked curious. Hanada blushed and started twirling with her fingers. I I went T to CN Naruto-kun. She stuttered. Her shy mask was in place again. What do you see in him Hanada? The dog boy asked with a hint of jealousy. Hanada's blush increased. W well he's nice, h he never tt treats people bad a and he's strong. She answered smiling while she thought about the blonde. Well I can agree with you on the first two. But I am stronger than him. Kiba stated proudly, his dog Akamaru barking in agreement. If only you knew the truth. Hanada thought looking the other way. If I were you I wouldn't underestimate Naruto, Kiba cause my bugs and I can sense tremendous power radiating from him. Shino said without a hint of emotion in his voice. Too much power actually, for someone his age. What are you hiding Naruto Uzumaki? His eyes focused the blonde that stood further away with his team. Kiba huffed and crossed his arms. Well, I don't know about that but, he didn't get to finish as the examiner called all the teams. All the team stood in front of Anko again. All right maggots it's time to start the second part of the exam. She announced. Every team pick out a gate, from which point you all will enter the forest and start hunting for the scroll that you need. She shouted over the crowd. Everyone nodded and walked towards a gate of their own choice. And another advise, don't, die. She told them and walked away. Way to make us feel better. A random shinobi muttered. Troublesome, a certain lazy genin muttered. Naruto and his team were standing in front of gate number 21. 
When do these gates open? He groaned. Naruto stop whining the proctor told us to wait. Sakura said annoyed. Sasuke scoffed and turned his attention to the forest in front of them. Idiots, he muttered. Naruto caught it and yelled, what was that Tem? HN, the raven-haired genin. Naruto, stop pestering Sasuke-kun. Sakura shrieked. Naruto winced at her loudness. Sometimes I wish she would just shut up. He thought. Okay people. They heard Anko's voice echo all around. The second part of the Chunin exam will start in 3, 2, 1. The gates shot open and every participant instantly dashed into the forest of death. Team 7 was making their way through the forest when Naruto suddenly stopped and started hopping from one leg to the other. What is it now? Sakura asked annoyed. I need to pee. He yelled back running into the bushes. Sasuke grunted and started to scan their surroundings, noting that the forest was so dense it barely let any light through. After a minute or so they heard a rustle in the bushes before the unconscious body of an Omegaker ninja came flying out. He wore a strange-looking breathing mask and had a cloth over his eyes with two holes for him to be able to see through. Sakura shrieked while Sasuke on instinct got in a fighting stance. A furious Naruto came stomping out of the bushes. Can you believe the nerve of this guy, trying to sneak up on someone while he's urinating? He yelled walking up to the out cold ninja's body. HN, Sasuke relaxed his stance. Naruto don't scare me and Sasuke-kun like that. Sakura yelled and tried to punch the blonde but he caught her fist. Sasuke raised an eyebrow. Sakura, Naruto said calm tone. Never try to hit me again. He gave her a small glare, that surprised Sakura completely. It was time to get serious. He let go of her fist and started searching the, enemy, ninja for the scroll without uttering a single word. Sakura moved step back slightly afraid of this new Naruto that stoop up to her. Sasuke narrowed his eyes. What's up with him? He thought. Nothing. Naruto sighed. Getting up he ran hand through his spiky blonde hair. He must have left it with his teammates. Oi Dobi. Sasuke called. Naruto turned to face the Uchiha. What's is it, Tem? He asked. Definitely the Dobi. You can stop this. Serious. Act. You're scaring Sakura. Not that I care or anything. Naruto frowned. Why do you think this is all an act? Can I never be serious? He asked because it doesn't sway look out. Sasuke shouted alarmed grabbing Sakura and leapt back, avoiding a volley of kunai that rained down from the trees. Naruto used replacement to escape. On one of the high branches stood two Omegaker ninjas dressed in a similar fashion as the on Naruto knocked out. Looks like his team came to rescue him. Naruto muttered stepping out from behind a bush. Hey, we came for our teammate. One of the two Omegaker ninjas yelled down to them. He had a cloth over his eyes showing only one lone eye. You mean him. Sasuke nudged the unconscious aim ninja with his foot. I don't really see the point in just handing him back to you. We could just kill him which will automatically disqualify both of you. He brought a kunai against the knocked out aim ninja's neck. You wouldn't dare. The second M ninja scowled. He had a cloth covering his eyes completely. Try me. Sasuke challenged with a smirk. The two aim ninjas scowled at Sasuke. Or we can just do trade, your teammate back for the scroll you possess. Naruto offered. Trust me, that would make things much easier. Sakura was silent the whole time as she followed the interaction between the four. But just in case she was already holding one to a kunai, ready to defend herself. The two aim ninjas started chuckling which turned into laughter. Sasuke narrowed his eyes. Why are they laughing when their teammate's life is on the line? Die. The one-eyed aim nin shouted throwing a kunai with a tag attached to the back at team 7. Noticing the tag team 7 leapt back a great distance to avoid the explosion. But as the kunai dug into the ground nothing happened. The two rain ninjas landed on the forest floor next to their unconscious partner, laughing harder than they were before. What's so funny? 
Sasuke growled a tick mark appeared on his forehead. One of the aim ninjas pointed at the kanai. It's fake. Sakura exclaimed surprised noticing the exploding tag was a precisely one of the oldest but still effective tricks in the books, the foreign ninja sneered. Damn it, how could we have fallen for something that stupid? Sasuke cursed mentally. He glancing at Naruto he was surprised to see the blonde still with a cool look on his face, like he wasn't worried at all. What happened to him? Sakura was now trembling. She felt it again the fear, the same fear and doubt she had before the start of the exam. Were they actually ready for this? She wasn't sure. But she didn't want to let her team down, mostly Sasuke, what would they think of her? Your village shinobi must really stink if you can fall for a simple trick like that. The aim ninja spat in disgust. Even you guys are pathetic especially that pink-haired one, just look at how she's shaking, she has to be the weakest link on the team. One insulted Sakura. The pinket flinched at his harsh words. But she knew they was true, there was no denying it she was in fact the weakest of their team even Sasuke had told her that. Naruto glared at the aim ninjas, he wasn't going to stand for any of this. Even if he didn't like Sakura and she didn't possess much skill next to what she learned in the academy, she was still his teammate. And he wouldn't allow anyone to humiliate the people he cared about. The Uchiha and the blonde can maybe put up a little fight. The foreign ninjas smirked. But even so you won't stand a chance against us. Sasuke shifted into his own fighting stance while Sakura shakily raised her kunai. Naruto on the other hand reached for his jacket zipper and pulled it down revealing his black undershirt with a red spiral. What is the dobi, Naruto, blonde doing? They all thought. Naruto then placed his hands in a ram seal. Rimitashiru Kai, limiter seal release. He whispered. They all felt the blonde's chakra spike. They couldn't contain their surprise as they felt that the blonde's power had increased tremendously. Where did this power come from? They all thought. Now that my full power is not sealed anymore, Naruto got in a fighting stance and grinned, I will give you guys another chance, give up your scroll and you can leave with your teammate uninjured or I'll just beat it out of you. His glare on them intensified. Choose wisely. His power may have grown immensely but we can't let that scare use. The one-eyed aim ninja thought. He whipped out a kanai and dashed towards the blonde ignoring his teammate's call to wait. Closing in on Naruto he attempted to stab said boy only for him to duck and elbow the aim ninja in the gut that made him gasp for air. As he bent over clutching his stomach the blonde's chakra enhanced fist collided with his head. It ended with aim ninja flying into a tree and was also knocked out cold. Naruto turned the last aim nin left standing. I hope you're smarter than him, so what will it be? He asked with a calm look on his face. The Omegakur ninja was terrified, he was the only one of his team left standing. He only had one option and reached into his pouch and tossed his team scroll towards the blonde. Naruto smiled it was an earth scroll, exactly what they needed. We could have avoided this from the start, now take you teammates and leave. He ordered strictly. The ninja complied, picking up both his teammates and left. Naruto side turned to his teammates who were staring at him in disbelief. Okay guys now that we have the scroll we needed let's head to the tower. He said cheerfully acting like nothing just happened and started walking. Naruto. The blonde stopped in his path. This was one of the very rare times when Sasuke would actually call him by his name instead of the usual insults. Sasuke. The blonde said looking over his shoulder at the raven. What was that all about? You act completely different. The Uchiha asked. It's called a mask Sasuke. He turned his head back forward. You should know a lot about that. He added and started walking again. Sakura was confused but Sasuke had a surprised look on his face. The dobi could see through his mask. How? He wondered as he and Sakura followed after the blonde. Konoha's forest of death was one of the village's worst places to be in, be it for civilians or shinobi, 
if you didn't know how to survive in hazardous circumstances, you weren't coming out alive. That was because most of the creatures that resided behind the giant fence were abnormally bigger and were extremely dangerous. There was a reason that many signs were placed around the fence, warning everyone not to enter unless they had a death wish. And now with the second part of the Chunin exam being held in this exact same forest, the participants not only had to look out for the enemy ninjas but also for these giant monsters. 4x. With Team 8, the team had easily succeeded in getting the scroll that they needed. From the moment they had entered the forest they had planned to set up a trap. And had started to gather a large amount of unnaturally large leeches. Their plan was simple, they would set out and lure a team towards the location of their trap. The unsuspecting team would then get caught in a giant undetectable net. They would then release the creepy looking blood suckers onto the enemy team. Pretty easy and it worked without a hitch. They were currently on their way to the tower after having acquired the scroll of a team from the hidden mist, who were unfortunate to land in their trap. This part of the exam is too easy, all the teams here are a bunch of weaklings. Did you see how easy they fell for our trap? Kiba bragged smugly as they were now a mile away from the tower. That's because they never noticed it Kiba. Shino spoke in his usual tone that didn't hint any emotions. If one of them had been a dujutsu user or trap specialist, it wouldn't have gone so easy, as you say. Kiba turned glaring at the bug user and scowled. He always has to make a smart comment. He thought, yeah, but even then we could have won, you agree with me don't you Hanada? He turned to his silent teammate who seemed to be deep in thought. Ah uh, Hanada. Kiba snapped his fingers in front of her face. She was immediately pulled out of her and blushed shyly. Oi Hanada what is with you today? You have been quiet ever since we've entered this forest. What's wrong? He asked concerned. N nothing Kiba kun I was J just thinking of SS something. She answered softly. Thinking about something or someone, the dobi, Kiba concluded. You were thinking about that baka, Naruto again weren't you? Kiba fumed with jealousy. Kiba, Shino warned. But the dog boy ignored him and continued. Really Hanada, I don't get why you even like that guy when he doesn't even give you the time of day. He's always walking behind Sakura-chan and doesn't even notice you. He pointed to himself. You could give someone like me a chance because I'm ten times better than TH, he didn't get to finish as Kiba found two fingers jabbed at his throat and his voice disappeared instantly. Shino pushed his glasses up his nose. Someone really has to make it clear to him that Hanada isn't that interested in him. For Hanada it was the last straw and that was. Saying a lot since said girl was always calm, collected and had a lot of patience. But Kiba really pushed it to the limit when he constantly bragged about how he was better than Naruto and when he insulted the blonde. Sure the loud and hyperactive act was just part of his mask which only a few people knew about. But still, it was sad and hurtful to hear and see how they constantly made fun of him or how they treated him like trash. From the day he was born Naruto didn't have an easy life as he was kicked out of the orphanage when he was only four years old and he had to fend for himself from an early age. If people only knew the kind pain and the loneliness he felt inside. His life did get a little better after Anko took him in as her own family but only by a little. He was Hanada's closest friend and was there for her when she was banished from her clan. The one who helped her get her confidence back and helped her grow stronger. That's why she wasn't going to stand by any longer when people treated the blonde badly. She was going to stop hiding and show people who she really was. The real Yuhi Hanada. And she would start with Kiba. Hanada glared heatedly at Kiba as she had two fingers pressed against the boy's throat exactly where his vocal cords were located. Kiba. She spoke in a dangerous tone her voice laced with venom. The Inazaka shivered in his spot. This was the first time he had ever seen Hanada this way. Listen and listen wheel. If you ever and I mean ever say something bad or insulting about Naruto-kun again. I will make sure you regret it your whole life. 
releasing a bit of killing intent to show how serious she was. Akamaru who was in hiding in Kiba's hood started to whimper in fear. Shino didn't say anything as he watched from the sidelines as Kiba was put in his place. Said boy tried to say something but no sound escaped his mouth. So she finally decided stop acting, it's about time Hanada. He thought smiling although it was unseen by them since his jacket covered the lower part of his face. Understand Kiba, she growled, pressing her fingers deeper against his throat, the Inazaka. Rapidly nodded not wanting to test this new Hanada. Good, Hanada said with a nod. Now let's get going. She removed her fingers from the boy's throat. Turning around she started walking. Shino walked up to Kiba who was rubbing his throat. What just happened, Hanada? The scared Inazaka asked, as he was able to speak again. The bug user placed a firm hand on Kiba's shoulder. Hanada stopped hiding who she really is. He answered. What do you mean she stopped hiding? What was she hiding? Kiba questioned. Kiba was really clueless and a bad listener. Shino thought following his female teammate, you'll see, was all the bug user said. Kiba stood there confused for a moment before he ran after his teammates. None of them were noticing the pair of slit eyes that were watching them from the shadows. 4x. Sasuke had to dodge another barrage of kunai that was thrown at him by a kunoichi from Kusagakar. Flipping up onto one of the higher branches he angled himself before launching himself towards his opponent. Forming quick seals he inhaled and spewed four small fire ball at the grass kunoichi who dodged them with great ease. As he landed he ducked under her incoming fist and engaged her into a taijutsu battle. As their fight went on Sasuke grew annoyed when he couldn't land a single hit on the Kusa woman who effortlessly kept blocking and dodging every one of his attacks. Sasuke had a feeling that this woman couldn't still be a genin, her skills seemed to surpass that of the average chunin. He wished Naruto was here now, maybe together they would stand a chance against this woman. Unfortunately they got separated. When the blonde tried to save Sakura from a huge snake that they encountered on their way to the tower. He was swallowed by the reptile after he pushed Sakura out of its way and the snake had slithered away. But before they could go in pursuit of the snake, this unknown mysterious woman from Kusagakar had appeared, blocking their path. Sasuke could only hope now that Naruto would somehow escape the snake but knowing Naruto, he was almost certain the blonde would find a way. As they faced off against the woman, Sakura was knocked unconscious when the strange woman released a bit of killing intent. Sasuke was left to fight her alone. Is this the full extent of your power, Uchiha Sasuke? The woman taunted as she sent a punch towards the boy's head. Sasuke immediately jumped backwards putting some distance between the two of them. If so I must say that I'm really disappointed that such weak ninja as you, came from the once fearful and strong Uchiha clan. On the other hand maybe that's why they were killed so easily, because they were weak just like you. She mock laughed. Sasuke grew infuriated at this. How dare she make fun of his deceased family. Oh, she was going to pay. Whipping out three small windmill shurikens with near invincible wire attached to them, he threw them towards the kunoichi. Using the wire Sasuke let the shuriken spin a between trees. This is the Sharingan Sufusha Sanitachi, Sharingan Windmill Triple Blade. He's able to perform it so well at his age. The Kusa Nin thought smirking. Maybe he isn't a lost cause after all. Sasuke pulled on the wires and made the windmill shurikens embed themselves in the tree barks. The wires around the kunoichi tightened and pulled her against the tree's stump. A single wire leading back to Sasuke. Flashing through four quick hand seals, Sasuke thought. Kaden. Ryuka no jutsu, fire style, dragon flame jutsu. And breathed out a stream of fire that rapidly sped along the ninja wire that he held between his teeth. The kunoichi screamed in pain and agony as she was burned by the flames. The fire jutsu was so strong that it blasted through the tree. Ending the attack Sasuke fell to his knees breathing heavily. I did it. He panted. 
but I'm also out of chakra, he thought. The sound of metal wires breaking reached Sasuke's ear, his head shot, to see the kunoichi removing said wires from her body. H how, he gasped with a stutter in disbelief. The Kusa Nin with her head down started chuckling. What is the matter Sasuke-kun? You look like you've seen a ghost. She said now speaking in a different voice. Raising her head up Sasuke gasped when he saw her face. Her face. The skin is falling off. He thought his eyes wide with fear. Indeed the Kunoichi's skin had peeled showing an even paler skin tone underneath and a creepy yellow snake-like eye. Raising her hand she peeled of the rest of the skin revealing the face of a man. The predatory grin he had on his features made Sasuke shiver. W who? What are you? What do you want from me? Sasuke was completely terrified of the person in front of him. My name is Orochimaru. Orochimaru replied chuckling. Licking his lips he placed his hand in a strange seal that Sasuke didn't recognize. And what I want, is you. As he finished that sentence his neck up as his head shot out towards Sasuke and he bit the raven in his neck. The Uchiha could only scream in pain as Orochimaru's teeth sank into his skin. A strange tattoo with three commas appeared on Sasuke's neck. After the deed was done the snake man's head retracted back to his body. Sasuke clutched the spot on his neck where he was bitten, as immense pain surged through his body. What did you do to me? He asked through his clenched teeth. Orochimaru chuckled and answered. I gave you a gift use it well and in time you will seek me out and IWI, he didn't get to finish his sentence because of a sphere of air that forcefully knocked him back through a tree. The last thing Sasuke saw before falling unconscious were two identical, feral looking blondes land in front of him. So it was Orochimaru Tem who sent that snake after me. Naruto thought angrily when he had landed in front of his teammate. His fury only increased when he noticed the mark that Sasuke now sported on his neck. It's the same as Anko Nichan. He clenched his fist. In his angered state he fed his eyes chakra which turned changed his red eyes purple and ring appeared with a four small moons, see my profile for more details. He turned to his clone sending him a nod. Said clone went to Sasuke and hoisted the boy onto his back and then went to stand next to another clone that was holding an unconscious Sakura. Now that he had gathered his teammates he calm himself down and let his eyes fade back to their normal blue color. So you escaped my pet snake's attack. He heard a voice say behind. Naruto turned back seeing that Orochimaru had already recovered from his attack and was now flexing his muscles and neck. I must congratulate you, that jutsu of yours took me by complete surprise, I didn't even sense you arriving. Orochimaru said with stoic expression. I'm flattered but I wanna know, why did you give Sasuke that curse seal? The blonde Jinchuriki growled. Orochimaru raised an eyebrow. Normally I'd ask how you know about it, but I'm on a tight schedule and don't have time to play around with you. So I will have to finish you off here since my snake summon failed to do so and be on my way. He told Naruto. Raising his head up he opened his mouth. A snake rose out of his mouth and also opened its jaw and just to have a sword rose out of it. So that's the Kusanagi that Anko Nichan talked about. Naruto thought back. Orochimaru gripped the handle and removed the sword holding it at his side. Souvenir. Naruto thought grinning as his eyes started changing to purple again. What's this? I wasn't aware of Konoha gaining a new dujutsu. Orochimaru mused out loud. I wonder how it measures up to the Sharingan though. Naruto heard what the snake Sanin mumbled and his grin grew bigger. Reaching into his weapons pouch he removed a scroll. Orochimaru raised an eyebrow as he watched the blonde rolled the scroll partly open revealing it to have a storage seal engraved on it. Naruto turned his head back to his clones, guys, go I'll catch up soon. He told them. His clones understood and nodded back before leaping upwards, disappearing into the trees. Naruto sighed and turned this time glaring at the snake user. Now that we're alone, Allow me to demonstrate one of the abilities that my Taiyogan, Solar Eye, grants me. Jiden, 
Jiryoku, magnet release, magnetic attraction. He said while making a, come here, motion with his arm. Suddenly Orochimaru's kusanagi was yanked out of his hands by invincible force surprising the sanin. The blade crossed the distance from Orochimaru to Naruto within seconds and disappeared with a puff of smoke into the scroll Naruto held up. WW, Orochimaru couldn't utter a single word as he was temporarily stunned, seeing his sword disappear in front of his eyes. Tada! Naruto smirked making a mock bow before quickly rolling up the scroll and returned it to his pouch. Overcoming his shock in an instant Orochimaru grew furious. You insolent, pesky brat, return my blade back at once. He yelled while lunging towards the blonde. Almost too easy. Naruto smirked making three quick hand seals, taking a deep breath. Kaden. Haisekisho fire style. Combustion ash cloud, he exhaled a giant cloud of super-headed ash. The snake user who was already in ran straight into his doom. Naruto smirked in victory when Orochimaru was caught in the ash cloud, got ya. He thought and clicked his teeth together creating a spark which ignited said cloud. The explosion that followed destroyed most of the surrounding trees. The force had sent a badly burned Orochimaru spiraling towards the ground where his body explode in smoke, revealing a scorned log. He escaped, well it's expected from a sanin. Naruto muttered to himself as he eyed the log and formed the bird seal. Juten Futon Kombi. Suzume no Hiko, gravity wind release combination, sparrow's flight, he whispered. A second later the wind around him picked up and he shot upwards through the trees. Stopping high above the tree line, hovering in the air. In front of him also floating in the air were the clones that held his unconscious forms of teammates. So what happened to Hubby Tem, did you get him? One of the replicas asked. The original shook his head. He escaped. Damn and I thought that your attack would have finished him off. The same clone replied dropping his head in disappointment. Don't be ridicules, he's Orochimaru a sanin for crying out loud. The second clone exclaimed annoyed. At the level where now we won't be able take him on. He's too strong and far more experienced than us. He pointed out. Oh boy, here we go again. Naruto sighed. All I'm saying is that we could at least try. The first spoke again. Clone number two would have face palmed himself if he wasn't holding Sakura at the moment. Why do some of my clones even have different personalities? The original sweat dropped. Didn't I just say he's far out of our league? Clone number two almost yelled. This is going to go out of hand. What happened to, clone number one began but was interrupted by the original. Guys am I the only one that finds it crazy that you are actually arguing with yourself. One and two started at each other then look at the real Naruto. You know we are part of you, right? Clone number two pointed out. And that means that you are actually crazy. Clone number one added grinning. Wise guy, Naruto thought as his eyebrows twitched. If you weren't holding Sasuke at the moment I would have dispelled you the moment you made that comment. Naruto stated. The mentioned clone snorted. Yeah, yeah boss, let's just go before we run out of chakra and drop our teammates into the forest below. Finally he says something rational. Clone number two, thought. Yeah, you're right, let's go. Naruto ordered and they started flying towards the tower. Meanwhile in the trees below Orochimaru stepped out from behind a tree, parts of his clothes were singed thanks to the explosion but he seemed okay for the most part. Staring in the direction Naruto flew of two, he mused. Interesting, how Konoha managed to hide something like this from me or my informants residing in this village is beyond me. He said to no one in particular. While I'll love to cut that brat open and study him I have to somehow manage to retrieve my blade from him. He growled at the thought of the blonde wielding his blade. But everything in time, he thought. His body slowly began sinking into the tree branch. I will have to seek out Kabuto-kun and inquire why this information on the blonde was left out. With that he disappeared. 4x.
When Naruto and his clones landed in front of He Tower they wasted no time and entered immediately. He had to find help for Sasuke. Because from the looks of it he was catching a fever. At that time Sakura started to wake up from her slumber. Ah uh, where am I? She groaned rubbing her eyes. Scanning around she spotted Naruto about to open up the scrolls. Naruto Baka what are you doing we are not supposed to open them. She shrieked. Wincing at the Pinkett's voice volume he replied. Oh you're finally awake. Didn't you hear Baka? We're not supposed to open the scrolls until we reach the tower. She said stomping towards the Jinchuriki. Naruto gave a look that froze her in her path. Where do you think we are, Sakura? It was then that Sakura realized that they were in the forest anymore. Oh, she mumbled feeling stupid for not noticing. Then she asked, where is Sasuke-kun? Naruto pointed back to where Sakura was laying down before. She saw Sasuke laying on the ground sweating heavily and twitching every now and then. If one were to look closely you would see a dark and vile chakra pulsing from the curse seal. That woman gave him some weird mark and he has been having a fever ever since. He told her. He kept the rest of the information on Orochimaru hidden. Sasuke-kun. She yelled in concern and ran towards the raven. Checking his condition she turned to Naruto. We have to do something. He needs help. She exclaimed worried. What do you think I was trying to do? He said almost irritated and turned his attention back to the scrolls. Unrolling them he recognized the summoning. Seal on both and toss them to the side. As they fell on top of each other they bulged and started to emit smoke. A puff of smoke later Naruto's eyes widen as he saw the figure who appeared. It has been a while Naruto-kun. The figure spoke. The blonde never thought he would see this person again or at least for a while. Why you? He stammered. Second day of the Chunin exam. The Forest of Death Tower. Anko you know that it was pretty stupid of you to try and engage Orochimaru in battle right? The third scolded the young woman. His glowing hand hovered over Anko's curse seal that was slowly spinning. Anko merely grunted in response but had to bite her lip as the seal pulsed painfully. You have to remember that even if you're older, stronger and much more skilled than before, he still is a Sanin, one of our biggest enemies and still far out of your league. Here is inside. Sometimes I really wonder where I went wrong with you Orochimaru. He thought sadly. Yeah, yeah, Anko mumbled. Is she going to be okay? A concerned voice asked reminding both adults that they weren't the only ones in the room. Across the room sat a concerned looking Hanada and Naruto who seemed to be deep in thought. She will be fine after I finish sealing the curse mark. Sarutobi reassured giving her a smile. Hanada nodded, but what about Sasuke? Naruto-kun told that he also has one now. She glanced at the blonde who seemed to still be pondering over something. I have already informed Kakashi and he is coming later today and will take care of Sasuke. The third answered lifting up his palm from the snake mistress bare shoulder. Done, I suggest you rest for now, there are still three days left until the end of the exam, enough time to get back to your old self. He stated. Anko nodded and started wearing her trench coat. Hiruzen then took a chair and went to sit in front of the children. Congratulations to both of you for getting through the second part of the Chunin exam, he said proudly. But actually I'm not surprised at all, you two are the strongest and most skilled graduates of your year and you would have made sure that your team survived and passed the second part. He turned to Naruto. But now I want to know from you what actually happened in the forest of death, Naruto. Said blonde sighed and began telling them everything that occurred since their team entered the forest, him meeting Orochimaru and making it to the tower. Hanada. Anko and Hiruzen were all patiently listening as the blonde told them everything that happened. Wait you took Orochimaru's kusanagi, are you crazy? Anko almost yelled at Naruto and made an attempt to bump him on the head but he dodged. Do you know you just put a giant target on your back since he will do everything to get it back, even kill you, she whispered, why Naruto Oto? I know, I know Anko Nichan it was kind of stupid. 
but you told me that it was a very dangerous weapon, especially in the hands of someone like Orochimaru. So when the opportunity presented itself for me to take it away from him, I took that chance. Naruto explained looking straight at Anko. I can't lose you Naruto. She said shaking her head. Naruto walked towards his sister and gave her a hug. I'm sorry Nichan. He told her as Anko returned the hug. I know, just don't do something so stupid and dangerous like that again, Baka. She smiled at the young Jinchuriki. You know I can't promise that Anko nay. He told her, Anko sighed. I know brat, she said and ruffled his hair. Hiruzen smiled at the scene, he made the right choice letting Anko adopt Naruto eight years ago as she clearly showed that she cared a lot for him and was very protective. Even more since that incident five years ago, it was one of the most traumatizing days for all three especially those two. He switched gazes between Hanada and Naruto, the events of that day had changed both of them permanently. The old cage shook his head and tried to get that thought out of his head. But that's all in the past. Now what are you planning to do now? He asked the blonde. Well I have an idea but first I have to meet up with him first. Naruto turned to him and answered handing the cage the scroll containing the blade. But could you give this to him first, so he could have a look at it? The cage nodded and took the scroll. I advise you to watch your back Orochimaru might come personally or send his people after you, thinking you still have his sword. Here is an advised. I will. Naruto answered with a nod. Now that we got that out of the way, we will move on to a more pressing matter. Hiruzen said seriously and pulled out a scroll and handed it to Anko. This is the latest report I received from your friends Hanada, Naruto and it confirms our suspicions of last month. She took the scroll, unraveled it and started reading frowning every now and then until her eyes widen and she slammed the scroll on the table in front of her angrily. What the heck are they thinking betraying use like that? She yelled furiously. What do they possibly hope to gain by joining side with that traitor? Sarutobi stroked his beard and answered, I may have theory as to why but. He turned to the two youngsters in the room. Since none of you two said anything or made an attempt to see what is written in the scroll I take it you already know of Suna's upcoming betrayal. The both gave the cage a nod and Hanada said. Earlier today we ran into him and he pulled us aside and told us. Sarutobi nodded and asked with a stern look, but which side is he on? Naruto answered, we asked him that and he said he. Flashback. You don't know. Naruto and Hanada said simultaneously. What do you mean you don't know? Hanada asked the person in front of them. You have to see and from my perspective Hanada I'm a ninja of Suna and I have sworn loyalty to obey every order given. But I am against the idea of turning against your only ally. The person answered. Especially if you're going to join sides with man who betrayed said ally of yours and will help him in destroying their village. Naruto and Hanada understood what he meant. Every ninja was bond by a code of honor and had to follow the orders given to them by their cage and disobeying it would count as treason that could lead banishment or execution. Ninjas would then run away from their home village and became missing nin. We understand what you mean, so what are you going to do now? Hanada asked. The person stared hard at both Konoha ninjas. I will have to fight and when I do I want to fight both of you, at least that way I don't go against the word of the case cage and I get to see how strong you two have become. He answered, I will secretly take out a few shinobi from the sound to help Konoha but when the time for our battle has come don't hold back on me, I know I won't. And with that he was gone. Naruto groaned as he ran a hand through his hair. I really wish we could have had this battle on a friendlier occasion like not in the middle of a possible war. He sighed. I agree with you Naruto-kun but you can't always choose your battle. Hanada said as she started walking off. Yeah, you're right, the blonde replied and followed the lavender eye-colored beauty. Flashback end. I still don't like that guy's attitude but I think we can trust him when the time comes. Anko mused out loud. So what now old man, she asked with a grin. Sarutobi's left eye twitched, 
Disrespectful as always he thought. We will have to cut this meeting short because I still have a lot of work and planning to do. He said. Also I have to call a meeting with the Shinobi Council and inform the Chunin and hire Shinobi to inform them of the future events. He told them and he turned to walk away but stopped at the door. Oh before I forget Naruto, Hanada your mission ends here. He said with a smile and exited the room. Hanada sighed as the door closed. Finally, she breathed out in relief and started massaged her neck. It was starting to get very tiresome. She mumbled. You can say that again. Naruto replied walking towards her. Ah come on, it wasn't that bad I would be fun to do what you guys did think of the pranks you could pull. Anko spoke cheerfully. The things you would do to the people is the reason why you weren't. Naruto told her. Plus people are less likely to suspect us and you know that Nichan. Anko could only pout while Hanada giggled at the young woman's antics. Anyway I'm hungry let's get something to eat. Anko suggested. Both Jenin nodded in approval and started walking towards the door. Oi Hanada, how long are you going to stay looking like that? The snake mistress asked as they left the room towards the tower's cafeteria. What was going on? She didn't know everything happened so fast, everything changed, he changed. Why? Ever since they entered the tower he hadn't said one word to her. They had checked Sasuke into the tower medical ward because he seemed to be coming up with a fever. Plus that strange tattoo on his neck was giving off this foul chakra. When they had a room assigned to them he had suddenly disappeared leaving her alone and she had not seen him the whole. The next day he still hadn't returned and she decided to go look for him something she normally wouldn't do. She had searched for him for almost an hour when she spotted him in the cafeteria together with the proctor of the second exam and strangely Hanada. They were laughing and talking to each other like people who knew one another for a very long time. Which was odd since Hanada was always too shy to approach Naruto in and outside the academy. What was even more strange was that Naruto kept calling the proctor Nei Chan. Naruto never mentioned that he had a sister she always thought he was an orphan. Now that she actually thought back she barely knew anything about her teammate. Only that he was an annoying loud mouth ramen eating orange wearing blonde and that he had a crush on her. But ever since they had entered the forest of death he changed, he acted more mature and barely even talked. Not once had he gotten in an argument with Sasuke or even asked her on a date. She always found it annoying when he asked her out and she always wished that he would get the hint that she wasn't interested in him or anyone other than Sasuke. But why did the sudden lack of attention from him make her feel so down? Was it because Naruto showed her more attention than Sasuke ever did or would do? Wasn't this what she always wanted, that he would leave her alone? And here he was in her eyes practically flirting with Hanada. Wait Hanada. Now that she looked at the girl something was different about her. Her hair, her eyes. Hanada's midnight blue hair was now longer and was tied in a high ponytail and her once white eyes were now light purple. Both had on different outfits, Hanada had on lavender colored jacket with white trimmings on the side. It was zipped up halfway showing that underneath she wore a black tank top on top of a fishnet shirt. Also she had on black pants and blue sandals. When Sakura saw how Hanada looked she instantly grew jealous because the girl showed to have blossomed earlier than most girls their age. Naruto knew wardrobe consisted out of baggy dark blue pants, blue sandals his ankle were wrapped with bandages. Lastly he had on a grey jacket that had he kept open showing his orange shirt underneath. Something strange was going on here Sakura knew it and she was going to find out what. Still fuming over Hanada fortune she turned around and went back to her room. The five days were up and the second part of the Chunin exam had come to an end. And seven teams in total had made to the tower, five teams from Konoha among them the three rookie teams of that year's, one team from Suna and one team from the newly formed Otogakur. At the closing of the second exam they had all gathered in a large hall that had two high balconies on opposite sides of each other and a giant stone sculpture in the back of two hands performing the ram seal. 
The Hokage had appeared with the team's Jonan instructors to congratulate the teams that passed and he started to explain to them the purpose as to why the Chunin exam was held. It was a way for the nations to test the strength of their warriors against each other. Then Anko dropped the bomb. Because there are so many teams that passed we will have to hold a preliminary round to cut your number in half. The snake mistress said. Some of the genin eyes widen, some groaned in frustration while others just a stayed quiet. Why? Kiba barked out a little ticked off. Because, she began giving him a slight glare. There will be guests coming from all over and everything has to happen within a time limit. So the less fight we have the sooner the Chunin exam ends. Everyone nodded in understanding, she continued. Each one of you will fight in a one-on-one -on -one match and the winner moves on to the third and final round of the Chunin exam. She explained. Who you will fight will appear on that screen. She pointed to the top right corner of the statue where the slid to the side revealing a giant monitor. But before we continue is there anyone among you that wants to give up now? Anko asked scanning over the gathered genin. They all started to look at one another to see who would quite. That's when the silver-haired, glasses-wearing team from one of the Konoha teams raised his hand. I give up, he stated. I'm too low on chakra to continue. He chuckled nervously. The Konoha Janans all narrowed their eye at the boy, all sensed that he was clearly lying. Your Yakushi Kabuto right, said the proctor of the first exam Morino Ibiki checking a notepad. Kabuto nodded. You may go. All eyes followed Kabuto as he promptly left the room. Anko coughed to get their attention. Since all of you are planning to stay and fight, let's start with the first match. All heads turned to the giant screen where names randomly started to appear until it stopped. Uchiha Sasuke vs Akado Yoroi. Will both competitors stay down here and the rest of you can wait on the balcony for your turn? Finished Anko. Team 7, 8 and 10 plus team guy went to stand together with their sensei on of the balconies. While the other team from Konoha took place on the opposite balcony together with the team from Suna and Otogakur. Anko suddenly turned yelled. Oi Hayate get your butt down here it's your turn to host. The Konoha Janan let out a snicker. The Hokage face palms slapped his forehead while Kurunai sighed. A sickly looking Janan shushin down next to a grinning Anko, giving her a slight glare she stuck her tongue out to him and left. He coughed and turned to the two competitors, my name is Gekko Hayate and I will be your proctor for this event. He said out loud so that everyone heard him. First I like you to inform you of the rules, you only win if your opponent gets knockout or gives up. When I tell you to stop and you ignore my orders you will be disqualified. I will also end battle if I deem your opponent unfit to fight. He explained while coughing. And more importantly killing is not allowed. Understand. Both Sasuke and Yoroi nodded. Hayate then raised a hand up. Ready? He asked. Both opponents shifted into a fighting stance. Begin. He shouted and jumped back to create some distance between them. Up in the stands there was a tension between the four teams from Konoha surrounding two people. Almost all of them had the same thing in mind. What happened to both Naruto and Hanada? They looked different. Naruto wasn't acting hyper. Hanada didn't even seem nervous to be standing next to the blonde and even talked with him without stuttering or blushing like maid. Everyone that tried could feel the power that radiated off both of them. Power that everyone knew they didn't possess before the start of the exam. The only people who seemed relaxed were the team sensei, Shino Aburame and Shikamaru Nara. Ino Yamanaka tried moved over to her rival and asked, Sakura do you know what happened to Hanada she looks so different? And Naruto too, Sakura answered, I don't know I have been trying to figure that out ever since he suddenly changed in the forest of death but I can't seem to find any answers. Plus Naruto keeps avoiding me and Kakashi sensei is reluctant to tell me anything. Huh, why, you're his teammate if something happens to him you're supposed to know. The blonde said in a suspicious tone. Sakura nodded in agreement but said, Kakashi sensei told me that it was an S-class secret that only Naruto, Hanada or the Hokage can tell us. 
That made Eno even more suspicious. What can those two be hiding that it's considered an s rank secret? She thought with a scowl. Um Shikamaru, do you know what happened to Naruto and Hanada? The Nara's chubby friend asked as he munched down a bag of chips. Shikamaru and nodded. Yeah I know but I can't tell you cause it's a secret and it's probably too troublesome to explain anyway. He told his friend. All I can say is if you ever are to fight against them, quite. Shikamaru looked at him seriously. Choji was shocked as he never saw his friend this serious before unless it was a matter of great concern. While I know that you're strong, no of us are at Naruto and Hanada's level. A are they that strong? Choji asked with a slight stutter. Shikamaru nodded. They are especially Hanada. She has a technique that makes even Naruto afraid of fighting her. That's all I can say. He said with a slight shiver and continued to watch the battle in front of them. Choji decided not ask any more questions and returned to eating his chips. Kiba had set his mind on finding out the truth but unfortunately he couldn't get anyone talk. Kurunai told him that he would know everything in time and not to bother Hanada. Shino barely said anything but it was obvious he knew something. That only left Naruto. Kiba was sure the blonde was the reason behind his teammate's sudden transformation. And now he was silently hoping that he would get to fight Naruto and beat him until he told him everything. Yeah that was his plan. With the members of Team Guy, Neji Hayuga was glaring at his former cousin that had an annoyingly cheerful attitude. His female teammate Tenten looked at her teammate in concern. While Lee was so into the battle to even notice what was going on around him. On ground Sasuke had just managed to knock out his opponent with a combination of punches and kicks he called. Shishi Rendon, Lion Combo. He fell to his knees panting. His opponent had managed to siphon over half his chakra with some kind of chakra leech technique. Kakashi shushing down to pick him up and brought him towards his other teammates. Sakura instantly tried tending to him but got into an argument with Ino to his annoyance, he got a nod from Naruto which he returned. Rubbing his shoulder where now sealed curse seal was he looked up to the screen competitors of the next match. Uzumaki Naruto vs Inazaka Kiba. He smirked finally he would get to see the blonde in action. Kiba shouted in glee, he would get to pummel Naruto into the ground and show Hanada that he was better than the idiot. He leapt over the railing and landed in front of the proctor, to his surprise a calm looking Naruto already stood next to Hayate. He growled at the blonde. What's the matter Kiba? The Jinchuriki asked with a raised eyebrow. Nothing, the dog boy growled in response. Um aren't you forgetting Akamaru? Naruto inquired. I don't need him to defeat you. Koba replied smirking. Don't be so overconfident Kiba, it can be your downfall. Naruto's replied. Just shut up and let's fight. Kiba yelled back getting into his clan's fighting stance. If that's what you want. Naruto sighed and his gaze turned hard that it made Kiba nervous. Hayate saw that both boys were ready and shouted, begin. While leaping backwards, Kiba instantly moved forward and started attacking the blonde wildly with rapid kicks and punches. But all his effort was futile as Naruto kept sidestepping and dodging every attack. He only grew angrier as he saw that Naruto still had that calm look on his face. Are you even trying to fight? He yelled, asked the blonde as he dodged another one of his kicks. I don't have to. You're fighting me with aggression thus you're using more energies. Trust me you will exhaust yourself before I do. Was his reply and ducked under Kiba's swinging appendix. Maybe or maybe it's because you're too weak to fight back. Kiba said smugly. Instantly he noticed something change in Naruto's eyes. The next punch Kiba threw was immediately caught by the blonde. Naruto pulled the dog boy towards him and kneed him hard in the stomach then grabbed him by his jacket and tossed him across the arena. Kiba managed to flip himself in mid-air and landed in a crouching position and immediately clutched his abdomen wincing in pain. What just happened? He inwardly questioned. Troublesome Kiba just dug his own grave. Shikamaru muttered. Why do you say that? Choji asked concerned. Just watch. The lazy Nara said. 
Naruto-kun. Hinata whispered as she started at her closest friend. Below Naruto slowly reached into Ai Weapon's pouch. Kiba whistled for his partner Akamaru and tossed him soldier pill while taking one too. The dog seemed to grow slightly and his white fur started to turn red. Akamaru leapt onto Kiba's back who was on all four, forming a seal he called out, Jujin Bunshin Beast Human Clone, with a puff of smoke Akamaru had turned into Kiba clone. And with growl they both ran towards their opponent. Naruto pulled a scroll from his pouch and spread it out on the ground. I won't let you finish. Kiba thought as he got closer. He tossed a smoke bomb towards Naruto which explode just as the blonde slammed his hand on the scroll. Come Akamaru. Kiba yelled as he started spinning. A Kiba followed next to him as they both spun into the cloud of smoke yelling, Yatsuga, dual piercing fang.